Universal did it. Why can't me? It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's superhero slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's superhero slate. Oh, yeah. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. And this week, Superhero Slate, that's us, we're Mm -hmm. discussing the theaters versus studio throwdown. Yes, the the VOD wars. That'll be the next streaming wars. Yeah, really, uh, what we thought was going to be streaming (laughs) services is not what the battle's going to be. Tomorrow uh, is May the 4th be with you, Mike. So some Star Wars Day predictions. Yes, if uh, if Disney doesn't contractually lock you down with a retweet, uh, but we'll see. Yeah, well, they 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 just they just want to use your stuff, Mike. They just want to use your stuff to, to make more money. Uh, we've got some more video game news because what else are we doing right now? Yeah, right? that's true. Uh, we we played video games yesterday for several hours and more. Yeah, the the uh, man the uh, the Call of Duty update. Uh, I'm glad I got my whole PlayStation set up in order, so I can now download these updates overnight, and I don't have to like wake up in the morning and just like watch well, the progressive load bar over hours. You well, know? Uh, just one of them. You had to do the other one manually, but yeah, know, but it, it's half the battle. The, yeah, I, I really resonate with a very very old meme now, which usually it didn't come across my plate, but it was like something along the lines of. Oh, I'm going to play PlayStation right now. Oh, wait, never mind, because there is like a system update that would take hours for people to play. Uh-huh. So, yeah, now I, I feel like a true gamer. Yeah, well, it's it's, it's <laughs> no worse than a, what a Windows update where, you know, they you have to get a Windows update. It takes like all week to, to get that thing done. So. Sm- smash cut to the top corner of my MacBook the last couple mornings where it says, would you like to install an update? And I go, remind me mm-hmm. later. Okay, computer, we're going to be doing this back and forth for the next month until I feel like I want to turn this computer off. So I hope you're hope you're into this tango. Yeah, well, that's that's the beauty of that, Mike, though. I mean, because you're only seeing it when you get on there to work, not when you're getting on there. Like, ah, I'm going to walk away from you for a minute. <laughs> so I understand. I understand that feeling. And I, I don't like to do a restart. Because if I read, if I restart it, Chris Flicks goes down, Mike, and we don't want to have that happen to you. <laughs> well, I'm still, I'm still in the olden days of a spinning hard drive too. So a reboot for me on this computer is just like I might as well go make lunch, go watch a movie, uh, because like the the maddening thing is even like once the screen turns back on and I see all the menu bars and everything, the computer's not going to let me touch or click any of those things for like another hour until things load in, and then man, iMessage just takes forever to reach retrieve old messages too it's just it's a it's panic inducing so um i guess if anybody has like spare time in their life uh maybe now is a good time to do your computer update so you don't uh, go crazy well i mean that's the thing uh i i do it for my the company i work for um sometimes and we this guy has a macbook pro the spinning hard drive went out on it this week uh so he shipped it uh, to the office, uh, it's supposed to arrive there tomorrow. I'm going to upgrade him to an SSD, Mike, Ooh. on his old MacBook Pro. So he, you're going to make, he's going to think you're a wizard because SSDs are like really the number one thing that like a consumer really feels a change if, in, yeah. in their computing. Like faster processors, it doesn't matter because they're just using Google Chrome. More RAM, I mean, more than likely they're just opening up like a spreadsheet, you know, if they're not doing anything too intensive. But yeah, the SSD is like, oh, my computer starts so fast you did such a good job here's a raise take all this money yeah well and that's the thing you know you're gonna hear the word ssds and you know uh, video game consoles computers everything i mean i'll tell you what i i if my computer has an update i usually just go to the ipad for the rest of the day uh Mm -hmm. because i can turn that thing off and back on in like what 60 seconds pretty Mm -hmm. pretty much uh so i i appreciate you know the the speed increases over over time here but um, um, but yeah, so we, we we played some video games yesterday. I think it was a good time. Double XP, Call of Duty. The game's breaking because of that new update. <laughs> but you know who who cares? We had fun. Yeah, there was there was a moment that I I wish I could have replicated because I wanted to take a video of it. You know, just before you jump off of the plane to parachute into uh, Verdansk, uh, you get to see your character model just kind of standing there, badass, before he jumps out. Um, I had both factions of character models bleeding into each other. So like uh, the one of my characters is wearing like a ghillie suit. So 
technically the model is just larger. So like parts of his suit was clipping through my guy that wears the baseball cap. And I was like, oh God, this is bizarre. What am I getting into? What has this patch done? Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, it's it's a bit laggy. The audio chat breaks out. It's just been frustrating, especially if you're doing cross platform because it works on um, what uh, you know if Xboxes can chat, but your own PlayStation, we can't figure. This game needs to figure itself out. But we yeah, had, we had a good time. I saw it at least on consoles because I thought a lot of the I thought a lot of the cheating was happening on uh, PCs. But I guess there's some sort of map exploit with even uh, console games on the PlayStation where you can kind of clip underneath the map. I don't know how you do it. I'm, I'm kind of curious how you do it. I don't think I would attempt it because, you know, I'm not a cheater, but it kind of reminds me of those multiplayer Halo days where like, uh, I remember, do you remember the map? It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, it's like a smaller ish map, but it's kind of like inside of a warehouse and it almost looks like a, like a, a like a set from gladiators, the TV show. And uh, there was like a sword off to the left, I guess, if you're spawning on one point in time. And then on the other side of the map, there's like this little tiny ramp that looks like you drive a forklift up maybe. But you could like kind of clip under the ramp if you if you like crouched at the right time. And mm-hmm. I don't know. It reminds me of those good old days. Oh, super jumping. I remember from Halo 2, people would hit where two pieces meet and then would throw their character model up in the air on top of the map. And then shoot <laughs> from there. So I, I know exactly what you're talking about, but... Uh, you know, that's that's the beauty. We live in things right now where they can patch these games and, and fix these cheaters before, you know, that's all you're fighting against forever. So mm-hmm. well, we'll see what's there. Uh, Mike, I, you, you put this in here. I was actually looking up the names when you were doing it. We got some shout outs this week to yeah, a lot outs. of good, great listeners who are still listening during uh, these times, whether they're traveling to work or just sitting at home, blaring us through their, you know, the home surround theater i don't i don't know but i mean yeah they 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 get out their amplifiers and they really crank up the treble so they can really hear our voices Uh Um, well i'm hoping they're turning the bass up for me mike i'll get real (laughs) nice and low here for this for this episode uh but yeah um uh, big shout out uh, on facebook vicky chan a listener um tuning in every week yeah even you know while we're, we're coming back um Alden Reynolds, who messaged us on Instagram, I believe, right, to, to oh. make sure I knew I was wrong. <laughs> I love, it. I love it when people fact check you. Yeah, it's well, <laughs> so so we're gonna talk about this. I said Venom made a billion dollars. It made eight hundred million dollars um, last week. And honestly, Mike, I think you'll agree with me. The new box office mojo when it was purchased by IMDb has just been trash, <laughs> absolutely awful to work through. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. But I also, um, since Universal does it, you know, if we if we take in digital sales and, and home sales, it's probably a million, a billion dollars yeah, at this point. Yeah, we have concluded that Chris's lizard brain had just been uh, sucking up money from other other venues yeah. uh, that maybe hadn't quite made it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, of course, shout out to superfan Jim Mentier for sharing the show every single week on Facebook. Really appreciate that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He tagged me in this thing about doing some albums, and I'm like, I'll do it. I'm not going to do it every day for 10 days. <laughs> That's a lot of social media, so I'm just going to do it all at once. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that up later. Too much social media for Chris will just uh, send him into a, a panic. It's, it's, so. it's part of my job, so I don't like doing like working on it. And then like the work and play thing has definitely been a... a I'm going to keep those divided, man. Like I can't, mm. I can't work and have fun with it at the same time. But yeah, shout out to those. I got another shout out here in a second to another listener, but that's going to kick us off into the news. Um, this week in history, Mike, I don't know if you know, this weekend is actually 12 years since Iron Man opened up oh. in theaters. Man, I remember going to Iron Man in in theaters, and it's so strange. Like, I, I, it's weird when I can like remember a movie so long ago, and like I remember where I sat in the theater. I remember what theater it was, which is just very strange. So it must have meant that like I knew I was watching something special, even though I will admit when when Iron Man came out in theaters i was i was a big uh, i was a big superhero fan but i i wouldn't say i was like the biggest fan well, in the world and i think like a lot of people like this whole mcu franchise just like kickstarted everything not long uh, not long after iron man cuz iron man came out uh, 2008 so yeah. it would have been maybe what when did when did we meet 2011 yeah um so it just would have been a couple years later where uh like you started to influence uh the comic books that i should read and then i had uh i, I had my girlfriend at the time who was enabling me and buying <laughs> me comic books also so then it all just kind of kicked up and started uh started going so yeah iron man uh coming out 12 years ago that was a 
that was a time for sure. It definitely it feels like it. I mean, I remember, so I was hyped. I mean, I loved superhero movies growing up. I didn't read a lot of comic books till college, but I was like, I was trying to get everyone I could go to go see this. I'm like, Iron Man, you gotta see this. I'm like, who is Iron Man? Why would I care? Robert Downey Jr. hasn't been in a good movie in a year. Like, <laughs> this guy, you know, he's, he's known for his drug use, right? So trying to get people to go to this was like pulling teeth. Um, and, you know, the year, the summer before, the weekend the summer before was, you know, when we got the uh, infamous Spider-Man 3. Uh, which was, you know, uh, everyone mm-hmm. loves that movie, obviously. <laughs> um, so uh, getting people together this was was interesting. So, you know, I was glad I got to go. I was still doing. I mean, we were both in college at the same time. We didn't know each other. I saw it mm-hmm. on campus when it came out that weekend. I hadn't gone home yet uh, for finals. So I remember the, I'm saying same theater where I was when I saw it. Were you on campus as well, or did no? You- no, this would have been uh, this would have been before the time I moved to uh, yeah. I moved to uh, Purdue. So I was just at home. In my uh, in my local theater, that usually I would drive to a different theater if I knew I wanted to see a, like a really kind of action movie or you know something a little bit more fun. If it was a little bit more down to earth and didn't care too much about it, I would go to the one that's a little bit more local, a little bit more of a dumpy theater. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but I remember where I sat in the theater. I was kind of off to the left in the back a little bit, so. It was a time, man. It was great, and uh, and you shouldn't have to prove or defend uh, your nerd cred because I, I should say that the the, the nerd community should uh, should should not stand for uh, 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 punching people down uh, for yeah. you know not knowing their stuff. But I have to say, Chris definitely had done his homework <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to comic books because he literally owns every issue of the Ultimate Universe, and I I would assume you've read ninety percent, if not a hundred percent, of all of it. As well. Oh yeah, so I mean, I gave Mike a nice digital collection of comic books before he moved to LA. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, probably like what a month before you moved, I just was like, "Here's a hard drive, go with it." Um, but yeah, I, I physically don't, I've read them all. Um, I don't buy a comic book without reading it. Um, so yeah, I've read all the issues of the Ultimate Universe from the the start to the end, uh, and there's a lot. I'll tell you, there is a lot in there. Um, but you know, um, you know, at at that time as well, you know, it's interesting because, you know. 2008 12 years ago doesn't feel like 12 i mean i remember i feels like we're still in the 10 year anniversary of marvel Uh but we have no this weekend was supposed to be black widow guess what we're not watching this weekend (laughs) Um, and what's really funny um i guess one of the first either rumored or scheduled or uh just kind of um first set release dates for guardians of the galaxy volume three i believe was floated around this weekend as well i tried to look it up but th- there's been so many uh, uh there's been so much news around Guardians of the galaxy volume three when it comes to release it's, it was kind of hard to pinpoint the very first uh date it was going to drop but yeah there's like an alternate timeline where we could be ro- watching volume three of guardians of the galaxy right now as well or or not watching it just in case you know it could yes, be the one delayed, not Black Widow. Yes, seeing it postponed as well, yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're definitely an interesting thing. So Iron Man, 12 years ago, uh, great. One of the first video games, I'm just going to, I don't have a lot on this mic, but I was going to talk about The Last of Us Part 2 getting a new uh-huh. release date. You're a big fan of the first one. Oh, yeah. Um, and apparently, uh, The Last of Us 2, the Naughty Dog series, is really, in this time, they're not giving bonuses or payment to their employees, um, and it has caused some... Well, I've heard from from reports disgruntled employees who leaked a bunch of Last of Us Two stuff this week. Yeah, I I, I thought I saw a headline that said the uh, or I think it was a tweet maybe from the creative lead of Naughty Dog that said that they they can confirm that the leak wasn't from an employee. But then of course you know you never know yeah. exactly exactly if that's just PR or if they consider <laughs> like a contractor an employee. I don't know. Uh, well, so, are they fired now? So technically they're not an employee. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. So. So, yeah, I don't really know what to take away from this. The video game community, the industry, uh, in my opinion, really needs to unionize. I mean, uh, mm-hmm. the indus- the industry is very, very structured in a sense of, like, everybody has their own job uh, to do, and uh, all of this sums up into one product. I mean, th- that's that's basically, you're, you're in a perfect situation for unionization there. And a lot of these big, huge video game companies are in Los Angeles, like right next to Hollywood, which is built in run by unions and um my my uh my uh kind of neighborhood that i that i walk in is 
not not too uh, not too far from uh, video game companies, and every once in a while you see uh, flyers on lamp posts uh, encouraging uh, like uh, these like developers and workers to kind of re- well, reach out and start to organize. So uh, uh, hopefully uh, this will solve the greater problem in the future because this is just kind of a story I feel like we've heard before. You know, those last couple months before a game comes out and you hear about like these workers all but dying to make these video games it's mm. crazy well it, it, the thing is i video game releases and we've got a couple to talk about are large productions on the scale of films and movies right which mm-hmm. are um, they even hire film and they even hire film actors and directors to direct cinematics and they these actors voice characters and they even like model the actor's face to yeah. be the literal character like they're they're pretty much movies yeah and and so you think that they should i mean i agree they should take the industry standard like this is media culture you're mm-hmm. providing a thing that that's like as big as a movie if not larger sometimes you should uh-huh. act the same kind of thing so uh, i agree so i mean last of us two i'd avoid spoilers the release date is june 19th mike that's not as far as away as i thought it would be since it was originally delayed um and then was iron man vr still doesn't have a release date those two are um delayed at the same time so uh we'll, we'll keep everybody posted but there's some video games for the summer for people who you know june maybe things will start feeling more normal again and but uh you know last of us part two there you go mike yeah the 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 bonus news of getting last of us part two out in the world is that they said once it's out in the world they can actually start working and developing on the hbo show because they kind of got to get that out of the way before they can start the next uh, peg in the last of us cinematic uh, universe so i'm yeah. looking forward to that yep yeah. but what else have you been doing this weekend i i have I bought Hue lights for my TV, but I don't know enough about Hue lights. <laughs> yeah, I feel so like every other every other text message into the group chat is just like, "Oh man, more Hue lights! Yeah. Look at this discount! Look at these hubs! You were even gonna send me your old hub? I feel like yeah. you're an enabler. You're like the first hits free. Like here's a here's your first to Hue hub. Yeah, and <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that's that's the thing. Like, what do you do when you're trapped at home, Mike? You improve your home. I have so. to say the uh, the the video that you sent me that was syncing up to that uh, that YouTube video you were watching. Oh, uh, the lights uh, and keyboard and everything. Yeah, yeah. if you have if you haven't posted that online, you should post it somewhere. That's really cool. Uh, Chris had like his lights in his office and the lights on his keyboard synced up with uh, his monitor, which was I don't remember what song it was playing, but it was one of those songs where like type type is the video like you know it's just like yeah it's like a a lyric video i think it was like sia and somebody else um but yeah i mean it's so what's fun about that mike and i don't know uh, you you work a little bit um that's i worked with a developer who built that for windows and i helped them convert it to mac so i've got my first github reference as a a, a tester slash uh, partial developer for that to to make that work on my macbook or mac IMAX. So yeah, I'll post it later. I'll, I'll do that. But, but <laughs> other than that, you're you're you've been consuming some media. So yeah, I think we need to start a, a new segment on the show called the well, I, I called it I called it the quarantine streaming corner, and then what you shortened it to the corn stream corner. Yeah, the corn stream. Uh, yep. So the corn stream corner. So this is what Mike's been watching this week. I'll I'll rattle it off here real quick. Uh, Dave on HBO slash Netflix, which is the Little Dicky Show, which just wrapped up its last episode, I believe this week so you can watch that first season it's yeah. in its entirety right now if i had a nickel uh, for every time mike tried to push the show on somebody <laughs> this week it's so funny it's yeah. really really funny um uh, uh, there's a new show that uh, I guess a new mini series that just dropped on Netflix this weekend called Hollywood which is a which is a seven episode mini series about Hollywood in the 1950s uh, following the uh, following uh, uh, like a small set of characters trying to make it in the biz and the the it takes a the story takes a unique direction and it kind of ends ends up telling a alternate version of history um I, I wouldn't say it's as drastic as the alternate version of history that uh inglorious bastards tells but maybe kind of think kind of like the same same kind of concept going on there uh so that that was kind of fun it was from the creators who have done uh I think they worked on uh, Glee and uh, American Horror Story, so there's lots of shirtless dudes in it. If you uh, if you're trying to convince uh, your wife or if she needs something to watch, or maybe even your husband, I don't I don't know what you're what you're into. So Hollywood on Netflix. Uh, we we've been talking about Anna Kendrick a lot oh uh, gosh, on the show just because she's launching she's launching like every streaming service. Uh, not only did she have Noel on 
on Disney Plus. Uh, she has a show coming out for HBO Max when that launches here in a couple weeks, and she also has a show on uh, Quibi that just launched. And I think she also may have something on Apple Plus. So she's the she's every she's an every girl right now. But back in 2015, she made a movie called Mr. Right with. Um, Oh, I can't think of the actor's name. He was he was the guy in Moon, like the only actor in Moon. I can't I can't think of his name off the top of my head. Um, oh, um, Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the 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 concept of the movie is actually very clever. It's a, like a romantic comedy where Anna Kendrick falls in love with like an assassin turn good so, or I guess maybe hitman is maybe the more appropriate way to say it like a uh, hitman that has developed a conscience so now the hitman is killing the people that's hiring him so it's kind of weird it doesn't really totally work but the concept's funny enough and if you're looking for like more romantic comedies that you can enjoy with your partner uh, give Mr. Wright a shot that's on Netflix and then uh, the most delightful thing all week was the Parks and Rec reunion uh, Chris I don't know if you're a Parks and Rec fan or if you if you no. caught up with this or not um, I, I watched the was, first like three episodes ever and I was like I can't do this I know <laughs> I've heard I've heard whether the first season it finds what it's looking for where its own voice but I just I haven't been able to get back into it yeah that, that sounds right I'll, I'll, I'll let it slide but the cast uh, reunited and it was great it was all it was all through like webcams and uh, I like the I like the problem solving of it the most. Like it was fun to see all the characters uh, reunite, um, and they found a way to stitch it together and, and edit it. But it's just it was clever to see how you make a kind of a Hollywood TV show with all of these constraints. You know, the script had to be written in the way where all of these characters were social distancing. Even the characters that are technically married and should be living in the same house. Uh, they brought Chris Pratt back, which is arguably the biggest actor out of all out of the whole cast. He came back. And he did a thing where his character is dumb in the show. So in order for him not to be on the same webcam with his wife, he locked himself in a shed and he was just like FaceTiming into the conversation. So I liked the creative kind of problem solving they did. And I thought it was pretty funny to see that all of the females in the cast looked very, very good on their webcams because they're the only ones that know how to do their own makeup. And all the dudes just kind of looked like crap, which I thought was funny to see that like how much the makeup and hair department does to a show. So a shout out to to the makeup and hair department for even a normal sitcom out there because they're they're doing a whole lot of work. Uh, so if you haven't checked that out, I was happy to see that it landed on Hulu the next day because I thought you know you know NBC, Comcast, Universal might do some shifty stuff and try to uh, just put it on like Peacock and say oh if you want to watch it you got to give us that Peacock money. And it's like I can't even get Peacock yet. So those that's uh, that's Mike's corn stream corner. So that's what I've been watching this week, and I'm sure I'll have new stuff to talk about next week mm -hmm. because I'm not going anywhere, Chris. Well, West uh, just add this Westworld season three uh, ends tonight. It's the last episode, only eight episodes oh, okay. a season. Uh, and despite, you know, I hate when they do this, but they've already announced they renewed it for season four, like a week or two ago. Um, so that's cool. And then Rick and Morty returns for its second half of its season tonight as well. Mm -hmm. Um, the next five episodes. So if you're looking for your other content, there's, there's some other stuff as well on mm -hmm. top of Mike's recommendations. Uh, and the last bit of news before we jump in here, shout out to listener Chris Kidman uh, for sending this link my way because uh, we know about HBO Max. We know about it. We know what it is, Mike, right? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, we're into it. Yeah. Uh, Mike had already signed up for it. He was ready to go. Uh, however, if you sign up now through their website directly in our show notes, HBOMax.com, you can get it for $11.99 a month for the first year. And, um, and th even though it launches the end of the month, if you sign up now, you get direct access to HBO now for the remainder of this month. So uh, $12 a month for HBO Max, Mike, that makes it a little easier to swallow, I feel. I know it's not a yeah. lot. $3 a month isn't, is, you know, a lot. But, I mean, heck, the amount of content, you know, like you said, we're not getting anything new out the gate. Not as much new as everybody else had. So, but uh, there's a lot of good stuff on there that I would like to watch. Um, so, I think, yeah, I think it's a good you, deal. Yeah, if you want to watch those last two seasons of Steven Universe, like I've been waiting for, mm -hmm. uh, you got to get HBO Max. That was going. And also, I've been uh, I haven't been uh, caught up with the Rick and Morty because I was like, oh, if they're splitting this into two parts, I'm just going to wait until it's all out. And it sounds like I'll be watching all that on uh, HBO Max anyway. Yeah, it should be out by then. Um, and then, like I said, uh, Westworld uh, season three, it'll end tonight. And I think HBO Now will give you access to that whole season once it's live. So. Um, you can catch it all in there. There's a lot. There's a lot going on here. So if you want to spend a uh, site for the next, you don't you don't pay a year. You just it's eleven ninety nine a month for twelve months, and then it goes back up to fifteen ninety nine. So you have to prepay. Uh, it's for new 
client, so make a new email address if you've already paid for it. So Yeah, there up. you go. Save some money. Save some money. Sign up for it. There we go. All right, now we're going to jump into, we're just talking about streaming and stuff we can watch, Mike. Now the, the biggest news this week, which I think is some of the weirdest stuff ever. <laughs> um, I, Universal uh, went ahead and published some numbers. They said, I think Trolls 2, uh, the newest one, made more revenue in the first month on digital, or three weeks, than the first movie made five months in, in theaters. Uh-huh. Which, that sounds pretty cool, right? I mean, I know the first movie had that Justin Timberlake song they still play the shit out of on the radio. Uh, and it'll, I mean, I, I watched Trolls. I didn't. It didn't bother me. Um, <laughs> so this this new one's out. Uh, it looks fine. I mean, do you think what? What? I mean, this is an interesting thing. I'm trying to say here. People bought this movie. Obviously, <laughs> a lot of this movie I, is it. Yeah, for, I, who bought this I, movie? I, I think the story here is not necessarily the con the content or the quality of the yeah. movie. It's just everything else around it, which I think is hilarious because you know if this really becomes a trend, if studios really start shifting towards video on demand, skipping movie theaters or maybe supplementing the movie theaters with this, it's hilarious to think that this all begins with Trolls Two. I would say a very inconsequential movie. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people worked very very hard on it, so I'm not trying to take that away from them. Uh, and there's a good chance it could be a perfectly great movie for families but Mm. it's just funny no one ever would have thought it would have been trolls 2 you would have thought it maybe it would have been like a christopher nolan movie like the next marvel movie like isn't that like the biggest (laughs) universal franchise like that's like in the top 10 of like movie franchises exactly and i and i wish uh, i wish i was a smarter person that had access to more data because i'd love to crunch some more numbers Mm. because as we all know video on demand goes through different outlets it's not like people are going to universal.com and adding trolls to their shopping cart and sending 100% of the money to Universal, it's going through other avenues. Uh, if if the iTunes store collects the same amount of uh, same amount of revenue that it does from like the App Store, I'm not 100% sure. That means Apple's got at least 30% of that video on demand revenue. I don't know if studios maybe bargain or they kind of negotiate the price sharing. That could be a possibility too, since maybe they have a little bit more weight than just a just a random app developer. So I'd love to know that number. And then I'd love to know the share also as well. Like who else is sharing video on demand? Like, is it like 80% iTunes and maybe like 10% Amazon and then just like a hundred little ones that sell all of the other ones? So I'd like to know how much of that money they're actually recouping because as long as I've been alive, I've been under the impression that movie theaters themselves, like, you know, AMC, Regal, Cinemark, whatever they are, are barely making any money off of ticket sales and they pretty much make all of their revenue from the concession stand so i'm curious like are studios taking a bigger hit trying to sell it digitally um and then also i i believe i saw the same headline you did where it said in three weeks it's uh recouped you know more than the first trolls movie uh did and i wonder how much of that is just uh is just the um is just the 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 kind of uniqueness of being able to watch something at home uh, directly. Well, but I guess this kind of this kind of shuts down that argument of people saying that they wouldn't spend twenty dollars to. Um, is it buy or just rent trolls? Rentals are much later. You buy first the first month and then you rent afterwards. I don't even think you can. I think the rental is now available for this, but it was purchasing. Out, out the gate. Well, because well, either way, people were very concerned about the the price up front. They're like, "Oh, that's that's way too much for trolls." But people bought no, it. They spent it. He, they. He, it, here's the thing on that though. Those people are the stupidest people who are in this <laughs> argument because trolls. We are not the, the audience for trolls, and that's what makes us unique, right? Uh-huh. This isn't a movie everyone, you and me, are going out to see. This movie is if you've got a kid and they're they're seeing these trolls toys and trolls commercials. You're gonna pay twenty goddamn dollars to get that kid to shut up to watch Trolls <laughs> in a heartbeat, and the, you can play that movie on repeat, right, as many times as you want. But one twenty dollar Trolls thing, if you have three kids, two or three kids, can you imagine how much that would cost you, your spouse, two kids, snacks and food at a Trolls movie theater, like at the theater? How much? Like uh, minimum fifty bucks, right? 
Yeah, like that's, like, that's like a whole night out. Yeah, and then you gotta you gotta wrangle these kids. I, I suppose you could talk about the the social implications of never letting your children go outside, but maybe that's a whole different uh, conversation. But yeah, I, you bring up a great point: is what would have happened if this was like a Fast and the Furious movie, uh, something a, a much more popular, but not really targeted towards yeah. children at all? Would it would it still have reached a similar number? And now saying it, maybe Fast and the Furious, since it's such a big franchise maybe it, you know it would have defied expectations but i'm just cu- curious like a normal just like run of the mill movie like that that people are just kind of mildly excited about you know maybe so a Chris the Nolan movie <laughs> yeah maybe like maybe the movie theater is still the the right way to go for them well i i am the biggest proponent of the movie going experience mike i love mm-hmm. going to a theater i love being in the dark room i love having the seats being focused only on the movie screen right no phones the so- nothing the social experience imagine watching endgame for the first time where cap picks up thor's hammer and yeah. uh, you're just in a silent room. I mean, you would still feel an emotional reaction, but like you get so much more out of the experience when everyone around you is like clapping, hooping, and hollering. It's just like an experience that's like no other. I mean, that's the whole reason why we like to go to conventions so yeah. we can experience this stuff with other people it, at the same time. It's it's contagious and not in a COVID nineteen kind of way. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> but like it's one of those things like you you got to be around because like again, what if I'm watching this? You're not watching trolls at the same time but you're texting me in the group chat right you, you two uh-huh. or three of us are having a conversation i'm like i'm watching this movie but my phone's going off my watch is buzzing like i'm not going to get that same attention uh-huh. to a movie that i would get so i love the idea of a theater going experience however you know in the 90s there was a a, a huge boom of straight to video releases um, uh-huh. vhs if you will we didn't have video on demand and yeah they were b movies c movies but i mean like those were still movies I'd, I'd probably go watch, you know, a little bit. So it's, it's we're in an interesting area here. But like DreamWorks um, or Universal is like, hey, guess what? We actually this 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 experiment due to this global circumstances actually worked for us. And you know, this may be something we could look at because you, we've talked about like, what if there's the uh, the idea of like you can go watch a movie and the, there's no kids in the theater who shouldn't be there, Mike? Like, uh, like a very nice. Um, I guess a crowd, an audience who wants to go to the theater is one who really wants to be in the theater. And uh-huh. and we can actually focus on the movies and not the smell of jalapeno behind you on on the nachos or <laughs> I get a smelly guy sitting next to me. You know, all the all the theater going stories we share every time that people don't think are real but they're very obvious, they're very much yeah. real um is is gone. But what is the interesting part of this whole story Mike <laughs> is going to get to where we talk about AMC throwing a hissy fit over this like <laughs> like what is universal going to do push back trolls like a week before it comes out right or put uh-huh. it digital they went digital amc is now saying oh you made money off this and you want to do it more well we're not going to show universal movies in our theaters anymore like our and here's here's my thing are movie theaters in a position to do that? <laughs> yeah, it's quite an interesting clapback, considering uh, I believe uh, Universal statement was, we might like to do this idea moving forward with all of our movies. Not saying exclusively VOD, but it seems like they want to kind of diversify, do some VOD in some theaters. So this is a very, uh, very, very strong clapback that I would feel like you would usually maybe just see privately on a phone call. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm surprised that this is kind of out there in the public and like yeah like you said they're not really in the bargaining position right now people can't go to the movie theaters so i guess maybe they're just trying to uh remain strong in the face of adversity i mean i don't know the the future of amc is the is a huge question right now i mean they're taking out loans they're you know asking uh investors to just hold tight to see if they can weather the storm and I, I almost have a feeling that if if you're trying if you're right now Chris imagining a future where maybe theaters are only filled with like kind of fans that really want to be there and you kind of get some of these people that would normally bother us stay at home to watch these yeah. I'm almost I'm almost envisioning uh, an envisioning like a scale down like which what happened with a lot of Best Buys you know Best Buys were building all of these huge brick and mortar stores then all of a sudden like the recession hits and then people just start buying their electronics also online on on Amazon and then you just see these like tiny little bitty best buys like pop up in strip malls where you can go buy your cell
cell phone, basically. Makes me think, like, is this going to be the future of AMC? I mean, their biggest expenditure is, like, the, the rent on all of these very, very huge locations that have to house all of these huge screens. I mean, we might be in a situation where the next AMC that opens only is maybe three or four screens, and I don't know if this is for better or for worse, but they're only going to be playing the most uh, the most lucrative films in those tiny theaters, or maybe they'll only be a couple show times a day, and they're going to rotate out a lot. So you're really you're not going to have your pick of times if you want to go see a movie theater, uh, if you want to go see a specific movie. But that might be the more nimble future that we see for AMC. Right, and and, and you know AMC's they're, they're doing the stream. I mean, they they do the they had the most I think one of the more successful movie ticket uh, movie pass designs like they, they never uh-huh. said they were going to cancel it so like w- he, he, there's just uh, some interesting stuff here like what what is AMC I was looking up right now actually I'm I'm typing in because Regal was everyone was like Regal is going to do the same thing and right now the 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 number one post on Regal's Facebook uh, literally says Regal is not boycotting. Um, uh, Universal, I think if I just type it right. It's not Boykin or nor any other studio. We'll continue the normal policy and play movies that respect the theatrical window. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, like, I guess the thing is they don't want to share VODs because Universal is like, well, maybe we'll put it in the theater and VOD at the same time. Split the difference, uh, which I think would be interesting. Um, yeah, it's just yeah, it is just funny like how much of Hollywood is still rooted into a tradition mm-hmm. that really there's no logic behind. We obviously like movies, we like the feeling that we go to them, but like Regal saying respect the traditional theatrical release, it's just like uh, they don't have to. That's the whole thing. Right. Like they, they, the internet exists now. It's like the record company going like, oh. we want we want the CD release to be respected. And, you know, if people are going to be selling their albums on iTunes, we're not going to carry their CDs. Like that well, didn't go well for you. Yeah, I was going to say, they tried that <laughs> once. And guess what? Uh, we're buying more stream. We're buying more online and streaming more online than ever. And, mm-hmm. you know, just the, 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 the idea here, again, if I had a family of two to three kids, and I could say twenty dollars to watch a movie, um, you know, uh, instead of taking my family like, and make their meal at home and have everything at home, everything's comfortable, or you know, fifty to seventy-five dollars and the hassle of getting them to the theater and making sure they pay attention in the theater. Which one would you choose? Mm-hmm. Like, they're, they're, but you know, again, if there's if it's an event film, you know, I would never watch Black Widow digitally instead of going to the theater. You know. Oh yeah. So there's there's sides of both, and and I think theaters need to learn to adapt to this and work with the studios, and the studios, you know, it, it, again, if they 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 are free to do what they want, and I think if they adapt to the times, they'll see a bigger success. The the the, the only thing that I, that I, I am I'm I'm slightly worried about, which is just as this a small thread of all the million things that can happen uh, when uh, movies start premiering video on demand, is I pray that video on demand stuff is not available at midnight in regions because this already happens a lot with like Netflix and even like Disney plus where like you're trying to catch something when everybody else is watching something, but it's already premiered in like the middle of the night in some other country or some other state. And you wake up and people are already memeing it on the internet. And you're just like, I haven't even watched it yet. Mm -hmm. Stop memeing it. So I would love to see like a, a release kind of more anchored to maybe the, I like the way HBO does it. Like when HBO was premiered, Game of Thrones or even Westworld they do it at a specific time they basically unlock the digital file at the same time it's broadcasting over the airways so I like that so it's eventized to a specific time so if, if this is the way this, I mean obviously I wasn't worried about it with trolls <laughs> but if a Marvel if Marvel ever does it with a Marvel movie like I, I hope that I don't have to worry about waking up to oh Iron Man died crap okay here's all the memes that people have been making all night mm-hmm. well I guess I'm gonna watch the movie now Right. Well, I I think but see here's the thing. You you what Disney and Netflix does is literally what HBO does. They just don't do it at the same time slot. Um because you know what's 3 p- 3 a.m. for me is midnight for you, which is like 5 a.m., you know, 8 a.m. in England. So like they're all doing it like that. They're just doing it at midnight and they should probably just do it in the middle of the day. Yes, like I agree. Uh, like <laughs> middle of the day for you, like noon, and then everybody else, you know, be the afternoon. Yeah, it's like I get it. Netflix, you want people to come home from work on Friday. Well, when they did come home from work and see new content, but like I ain't up at thir- that, uh I I am not up at midnight on Thursday, <laughs> like watching this mm. stuff when it drops. So yeah. 
So yeah, there, there's some there's some ideas here that are being you know argued about, discussed. I I think there's an opportunity for everyone to succeed, and everyone has a place in this without drawing a line in the sand and be like, no, we're not going to show your movie theaters because yeah. you're being successful because that's going to push Universal to be like, well, yeah. In uh, in all honesty, all of this seemed inevitable in some point in time, but this kind of pandemic has just has just moved up the timeline. Uh, so. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that COVID is necessarily yeah. ruining movies. We were going to get here at some point. It's just, it's just bringing it to a head very, very quickly. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, this is the same thing we talked about when movies uh, like Artemis Fowl that were going to go did theaters, you know, was it ever going to be successful? They just put it in into streaming. So um, and we'll talk about that later. All right. Shifting gears uh, literally and, and, and metaphorically here to Transformers because the show is about cars, right? <laughs> um, the animated prequel movie, we got three things here for Transformers. An animated prequel movie is being written by Josh Cooley, who uh, wrote, was the, the writer for Toy Story 4, which turned out to be pretty good. I thought it, I was like, why would we need this movie? It ended up being pretty all right, Mike. What do you think? So, animated prequel movie, uh, it makes me think, are they trying to uh, release something theatrically, or is this going to like pop up on a streaming service? I know Hasbro owns Transformers, but does a studio yes. own Hasbro slash Transformers uh, no, right well, now? Well, Paramount has all the, the rights to these. Oh, so Paramount is like one of the last few movie studios that like isn't tied to some sort of corporate streaming giant. So uh, there's a chance that this could possibly maybe get sold to Netflix because I believe that they've already worked with uh, Netflix on yeah. like some Fast and the Furious stuff. Netflix, I think this is, um, you know, if they wanted to, this could be a theatrical movie. We've seen a rise in really good quality animated films, Mike. You know, again, Toy Story 4. Spider-Verse. Uh, Spider-Verse is one. And, you know, how, how bad did we beat up Spider-Verse before we walked in that movie theater? Uh, well, I mean, I, I think they if Transformers wants to replicate what Spider-Verse did, they got to do something new and exciting and clever with the visuals. Yeah. I have a feeling with transforming robots, you know, obviously the easiest thing to do is just, you know, to do CG. I mean, and even Spider-Verse was CG, but also they introduced some traditional elements into there. They try to, they mix things up yeah. a little bit. They did very innovative things with depth of field. Hopefully Transformers can bring on some of that stuff. Yeah, and I think, you know, if they're hiring someone like this too, right, I think they're going to they, they will because again we've seen in our lifetime Mike how many an- different animated styles of Transformers mm-hmm. over a whole the years. lot even the first CG one of the first CG shows you know Beast Wars uh, which we'll talk about here in a second again CG so I think you know it's not going to be something they just write off as a movie I think they're going to be like okay this is an animated movie that's going to have lots of detail and lots of cool stuff because it'll all be I think the, since it's a prequel I think this is all set on Cybertron so um, I think it'll be more than just gray palettes and steel beams, hopefully, knock on wood. And they wouldn't be cars, technically, would they, at that point? No, isn't – I mean, I don't know a whole, whole lot of lore about Transformers, but isn't Cybertron as a planet, like, always changing? And that's why the organisms that live on the planet have to be able to change as well to adapt to the planet. I, I thought that was the lore, so it could if, be. That's the, <laughs> if that's the case, every episode they could look slightly different. Well, well I mean, I mean, it's, again, it's, it's a movie um, – as oh yeah every act they could look yeah. a little different but because of the way bumblebee came out and kind of retconned the transformers universe a little bit um they could uh-huh. definitely make it what they needed to be so they're not uh-huh. afraid to do that but the next live action transformers movie mike i know you're excited for this put it on your calendar june 24th <laughs> 2022 all right, and we've talked about this before. Um, there's, there's someone writing it, and supposedly, very, very highly rumored, this is based on the Beast Wars animated <laughs> series. Oh this my one. god, this is gonna be so crazy if it's true because it's like, how do you? I mean, what is the rational explanation between robots turning into animals? And the weirdest thing about it when it was on Beast Wars, when it was on a cartoon, was just like, there was almost no reason for them to transform because the robots do not to, do not need to be disguised on a like a primordial planet where there's no humans that could find them, you know? So it makes me think, are they going to like put Beast Wars, but maybe make it modern times, have human well, actors and be like, oh, this isn't my dog, this is Optimus Prime. Well, it could be. I think I think there's an opportunity here because if, I don't know if, how familiar you are with the Beast Wars lore of it. I, it's set actually, I think, thousands of years in the future uh, or something like that because they, um, these are like the descendants of, Op- like Optimus Prime has been like dead and like this Megatron's a different Megatron because he's Optimus Primal, a descendant of Optimus Prime kind of thing. Um, 
So I, I would like to, I mean, they're going to have to change it, obviously, because Beast Wars, I mean, if you go watch it, it doesn't, the effects don't hold up on that. But <laughs> It's but fun. It's fun, though. It is fun, because, <laughs> like, season two, they were like, guess what? You're now trans metals. Some of you have robot parts. Which makes outside. even less sense, because you're even less in disguise now. Like, Rat Trap has, like, wheels on its size. It's like, you don't look at anything like a rat. Well, well, if humans existed, you, they would suss you out in a second. Well, you know, you know why, though? To sell more, <laughs> sell more toys. Uh, yeah. And by God, I had a lot of these toys. They did the Fusors, um, which was like two uh, like creatures in one and, and stuff like that. I remember the big Manta Ray was one of the coolest ones. Um, anyway, it was really – it's an interesting, interesting show. But I think <laughs> yeah. I think if they go the route of for future Transformers, like, hey, guess what? We have smaller Transformers who are more animal size. Uh, it would be different than before and maybe could be and- interesting. And we're in the same debate all over again. If this movie doesn't have any human actors in it, is it even a live action movie to begin it? What's the difference between the Beast Wars, quote unquote, live action movie with no humans and the animated prequel movie that may or may not show up on Netflix? Yeah. Who knows? Like there's no humans in any of them. Is it just the art style difference? So, uh, Well, I think uh, if Beast Wars is just going to be a continuation in the current uh Put Shia LaBeouf in it. Yeah, he's crazy. Like. He's back. He's back. He's doing things. Uh, what was it? Mark Wahlberg was in the other ones, wasn't he? Or something like yeah. that. Yeah, Marky Mark. God, I have lost track of all those fucking movies. Frasier was in no, one the, of them. <laughs> you know what the funny thing is? That the movie theater that I saw uh, Iron Man, the Iron Man in, was the same movie theater that I saw the first Transformers in. And I saw the first Transformers at the midnight showing, back when like midnight showings were actually midnight showings. Like there wasn't like 7 p.m. Yeah. showings. Like it was, you couldn't technically see the movie until the clock struck Friday. So um, that was a fun movie. That was a fun movie well, also to see it. What's going to, what's going to, what, you bring up to a point I was going to say earlier. I saw Iron Man in the drive in theater later Ooh. that summer with, with a Hulk, in Iron Man and Incredible Hulk to like double screening which is great Mm -hmm. I saw Transformers at the same drive-in theater as I saw Iron Man at, so I, I've seen a lot of these at, at the drive-in. So this is a great opportunity since uh, drive-in movie theaters are the only movie theaters that can really be open right now, and I know that they're few and far between across the country or wherever you might live. But if there's a drive-in movie theater that's near you and you have gone during this pandemic to see any movie, whether it's new or old, please reach out to us and let us know what that was like. I'm, I'm really curious. Apparently there's a drive-in movie theater down in Florida that's really popular. That's like the o- one of the only theaters right now that's really generating revenue technically for the box office, which mm-hmm. I think is pretty funny. So yeah, I want to hear any drive-in, any drive-in movie stories. You know what? A blanket statement. Any drive-in movie story that you have, new or old, I'm just nostalgic for well, it. Because ne- I never had a chance to go. Like where I grew up, there wasn't any drive-in movie theaters. When I moved out to LA, like, all of the drive-in movie theaters were like closing because they no use for them. So, yeah, I, I want to hear those stories. Well, it's funny because uh, we'll we'll talk about it later. Because I I literally whenever you uh, whenever I got married, I lived next door to a double screen drive-in theater, and which is you know, and then I grew up in a town with two drive-in theaters. Um, I even remember watching The Rock. Remember with Sean Connery and, and, and Nicholas Cage oh, yeah. at the drive-in. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. What? What did Dwayne? What movie did Dwayne yeah. Rock Johnson? The Rundown? Did it, you see the Rundown? No, no. That, that one closed. Uh, <laughs> I remember seeing the Cable Guy there. Uh, I've got some really interesting stuff, so we can we can bring that up later. But I, I, I I've got your your stories. Nice. The last thing here is the Bumblebee sequel is getting written by Joby Harold, who's writing the Obi Wan Kenobi show for Disney Plus yeah. as well. So. All right. Um, so I think people really, really, really like that Bumblebee movie. I haven't seen it yet. It's good. It's 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 what the Transformers movies always really needed was some heart and some emotion and some human stakes yeah. because it just turned into a bunch of uh, metal moving around well, like, in later franchises. Like the first one's good and Bumblebee's good, but like in the middle, like Michael Bay happened. It's like what like what happened here? Yeah, I, I know the writer strike happened during the second one. Um, but that movie still, I don't think could have been saved by any number of writers. So Uh we'll see. Tomorrow is May the 4th. Be with you. Star Wars day. Mike, are you excited? Sure. Well, I mean, because there's no Star Wars convention this year. So I guess this is all the news we're going to get for Star Wars. Uh, and I know you're still salty over the last one. So, so we'll we'll talk (laughs) here. Uh, so Star Wars day, I assume there's going to be tons of announcements. They're just going to use this day as an opportunity to pump us full of Star Wars information. Uh-huh. Um, the Clone Wars final episode is not debuting on Friday. It's debuting on Star Wars Day tomorrow. 
That's good. I'm glad that they're doing something like that. Yep. Kind of giving giving the fans a treat. Jesus Christ, Mike, you need to watch this show. Like <laughs> these last four have just been. I gotta catch up. I gotta catch up, man. I uh, this is a time where I have to track down mutual entertainment when you're cohabiting. So I'll get around to it, man. It's on, it's on the agenda. You, you just this last four, just skip the rest of it. Just go to the end. I don't care at this point. Um, because uh, you know, this last these last episodes, this wraps up the Clone Wars for good. Supposedly, they could obviously come back and make more if they wanted to, uh, but I don't think they're going to. Um, this also, you know, leads into Rebels. But you know, this this has been great. I'm I'm really excited to, to to watch it. This is going to lead me to a very important topic that Mike did not talk about last week. But I'm going to go ahead and hit this point home, Mike. Yeah. Don't message us in the morning of an episode airing if you're watching it first thing in the morning. Give us the day and then tell us your thoughts or two days because you're going to ruin this last episode for me. I'm going to be very upset at you. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty Chris sure is pu- this Chris happened. Is putting up his barriers. <laughs> I am. I'm pretty sure. Did this not happen to you with a movie recently, Mike? Uh, I mean, this is, I mean, this has just happened before a lot of the times in general. I mean, this is, this, uh, this, uh, loops back to the conversation that we were having before yes. with, uh, re- re- with release windows. Yeah. When things are streaming now, you gotta be a little bit more, you gotta be a little bit more delicate out there in, in, in the world just because, um, Oh man, like th- th- this is the only uh, thing that's positive about my anxiety recently. Since we haven't had any big movies come out recently, I haven't had to go on Twitter and uh, throw up my muted keywords to try to avoid stuff. So that's been that's been a little good for my psyche. But yeah, don't don't spoil Clone Wars cr- for Chris. Yeah. I mean, obviously, don't spoil it for me either. But there, I I'm a little bit more detached from it. So yeah. you might send me a spoiler. I'd be like, I don't know who the fuck this is. Like, what character is this? You're not spoiling anything for me. So be nice yeah. to Chris. Yeah, thank you. I- <laughs> And, and, and just just a note going forward, as these things are on digital and you are watching them, some people are staying home, watch them in the morning. I usually don't watch them until I'm off work, uh, quote unquote off work at like after five. Um, but you know, the Clone Wars episode is out tomorrow, and I'm going to try to watch. I guess I'm going to try to watch it early as I can, Mike, because I got <laughs> no the, other choice. It's the down downside of uh, of making uh, making content around yeah. all this stuff. You become a target, exactly. <laughs> and lastly, uh, on the just the. For this note on streaming, um, they've moved up the release of The uh, Last Jedi to, on Disney Plus two months early. It was supposed to be uh, in July for that. Um, so you can watch every all nine episodes of the Star Wars uh, Skywalker Saga on uh, Disney Plus starting tomorrow. Well, I, I think I think that that would have that would be officially the marker for every single piece of Star Wars content would be on Disney Sol- Plus. Correct. Solo is not on there. I looked. Oh, is that still tied to Netflix? I think so. I was on there oh. <laughs> um, the other day looking because it because Disney Plus finally did the thing I've always wanted to do, to do. Mike, there's playlists now. Like oh, you go nice. like like he here's the Simpsons predicts the future playlist and it's all the Simpsons oh, episodes. Here, rad. Here's the Star Wars movies and they got it in the order like of release order that you can watch. But I did not see Solo anywhere on Disney Plus. Yep, I, I just looked it up. Solo is still on Netflix. That's that's funny. That those contractual obligations they stretch out, man. Because it's sad. Because I'm like you know I I. I I'm not as big of a fan of uh, Rogue One as everybody else, but I, I do enjoy Solo as an adventure film. And it's been what two years now since it came out, almost. So I'd I'd like to watch it um, again on there. So whatever. But yeah, so last year you can watch all the Star Wars movies, whether you like them, you hate them, whatever. They're all on Disney Plus uh, starting tomorrow. So that's good for it, right? Yeah, uh, I I was just checking. I don't think the Christmas special is on Disney Plus. Oh, they'll never so, put that on there. So I guess not all of the content. <laughs> I think you can find that on YouTube. That's how much they don't care about that. that episode, yeah. So let it let it die. Yeah. Forget the past. <laughs> uh, I I actually have a Kill it. I have a several versions of it downloaded if you ever need to watch it. So don't you worry, Mike. I got you covered. <laughs> Star Wars Battlefront 3 has apparently is not in the works, sadly. Uh, Battlefront 2 just ended its life of uh, uh, new content um, this past month or two, uh, laid, laid to rest gently. People still play it. They're going to support it, you know, but not new content. But apparently mm-hmm. Battlefront 3 is not being made by EA or DICE. They're going to focus on the new Battlefield front- franchise. Uh, but the Jedi Fallen Order sequel, I think, has been fast-tracked for a 2022 release. Yeah, it makes me wonder if there's a long-term whiteboard strategy over at Disney somewhere with their uh, video game content. Uh, I mean, they got they got it. They got to know that video games. Uh, that's got to well, be a really big pillar of their trident over well, there. So, well, if you look at it this way, uh, Marvel recently, Spider-Man was a huge success. 
Uh, mm-hmm. The Avengers looks like it's going to be a huge success when it ever comes out. Um, Star Wars Fallen Order was really good. Uh, I know you're still working on it. Uh, but Battlefield 1, or Battlefront 1 and Battlefront 2, despite being, you know, fans wanting them forever, EA botched both of these horribly in different ways. Um, the first one is only online. There's no single player, no nothing else. Like, no, like, story mode or or stuff like that. And then the second one had the story mode, but it was plagued by the microtransaction uh, controversy. You're talking about Battlefront, Battlefront. Yeah, Battle I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, Battlefront. Yeah. Battlefront 2 um, was just plagued yeah. by the, the microtransactions. Yeah, I remember. And there was, like, a, there was like this huge, uh, there was this huge outpouring of just... Uh, uh, just negativity towards the release and they had to just prove to gamers no 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 we took it all out that we we're promised none of this is in the game anymore yeah. and then I think I heard people say well, a couple months later yeah they're starting to put it back in the game well it's, it's <laughs> not it's not in there um, because everything you buy now is like if you put money as cosmetics previously it was like pay to get more weapons mm-hmm. and stuff which is pay to win but you know it, that was so bad it even caused legislation for our loot boxes gambling like mm-hmm. Battlefront 2 I mean, it, right now it's it's actually a really fun game with everything in it. But at the time it launched, it just it just was awful. So I'm really sad that they're skipping Battlefront three. But EA's had the license for Star Wars for so long, and they've only made three games. Mike, they need to give this to somebody else, a studio that wants to do it, not a studio that you know just has. You just they can't yeah. do it because EA can make any game they want. They have them. I mean, after seeing the success of you know obviously like Fortnite, PUBG, Apex Legends, uh, Call of Duty Warzone, it makes me think that every studio, every franchise, everyone is going to want just like this this uh, Warzone free version of their game that they can just perpetually keep out there making money. So I wonder if maybe one day we'll see a Star Wars thing kind of like that. Yeah, I mean, I I would do that. They put Star Wars skins in Fortnite. Um, but you know, would would a Star Wars game like a Battlefront game benefit from that? I, oh man, I'm I'm just kind of imagining like a big map, kind of similar to Call of Duty, where instead of getting into vehicles, you're getting into like a like an ATST or something like that, or mm-hmm. an AT-AT. That would be oh man, that'd be you can rad. call those in. I just I I think what what sucks about that is because every Star Wars movie, every planet is only defined by one geographical um, <laughs> thing. Like oh yeah, that's right. Like how do you split this map up that makes it look like that? Um, or, or do you have multiple large maps? Um, well, that's, that's essentially Battlefront. Uh, <laughs> but but a, a free-to-play Battlefront. So, I don't know. There's yeah. options here. We, we got ideas. We got to hire us, Disney. We, yeah. We got ideas. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, Star Wars stuff, Mandalorian Season 2 work is still going on in this movie while production is shut down pre post-production is going on so i think they filmed all of this already mike yeah post-production is one of the few things in hollywood that can kind of still move along because it's mainly a technology-based medium technology and communication-based medium where a lot of people are on zoom and phone calls and in front of editing computers and reviewing cuts and things like that it's the whole production of people behind camera that's the the dicey part so i guess they're lucky that they kind of got they got all of their shots that they needed. But like I theorized last week, I still wouldn't be surprised if there are places that are just one shot away from finishing it. And they're just like, nope, we're just going to make it in the computer. Well, it seems the Mandalorian. He doesn't have a face. So is that not the easiest thing to do? <laughs> yeah, that will be the easiest. I'm sure he's a CG character in most uh, battle scenes anyway. <laughs> and uh, Baby Yoda is also, uh, I know he's a puppet, but they've got him in the CG model. Don't don't mm-hmm. you? They've got that, that thing scanned to a... Well, well a I think they, like we mentioned before, they're... They're coming out, or they maybe it came out already. The documentary for uh, that comes the out, Mandalorian that comes out tomorrow on Star Wars. Day, I was going to mention. Here. Yeah, so uh, I believe what I what I heard was um, the Baby Yoda. Obviously, many scenes he's CG. I'm sure there's a couple that he's puppet, but I think in every scene, no, ma- no matter what, they always use a puppet, and then they use that puppet for animation reference. So you might think you're seeing a puppet, but you're actually seeing a CG character animated to look like a puppet. Exactly, or they touch up the puppet with CG. Like you know, Ooh. that's that's not a, an uncommon thing here. I'm trying to figure out if I, um, um, yeah. So apparently, this is there are multiple episodes of this upcoming documentary. Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's eight episodes. It's eight I episodes because someone asked yeah. me, was, they thought it was just like one documentary movie, and I'm like, no, it's it's week eight weekly episodes, and I think episode one and two drop tomorrow. Yeah, um, I. I w- 
I wonder if maybe this is just kind of like you know how if you tune in after the credits roll on Westworld, you kind of get a behind the scenes thing. The, the talking wonder, dead kind of thing. Yeah, I wonder if maybe it's a slightly more fleshed out version of that, where it's just like each episode just each episode of the documentary connects with each episode of the show because I mean that they fit pretty well, right? Well, I think um, it's more from what I've read here the 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 two episodes are more focused on like how the Mandalorian got made, like what it took to get to here rather than each episode. Um, So that's, I I think, you know, as a whole, we might see some episodes, but like, I don't think it's going to tell us go through each episode. I'd love to see some exclusive footage never released before of previous Star Wars TV show ideas, because this is the first ever Star Wars TV show. And I know that they have some leaks and some drops. Yeah, live action. There has been some stuff out there of live action stuff that has been filmed. But I'd love to see stuff that we've never seen before. Maybe screen test of like Jedis and robes that, oh, this was going to be on like CBS like 12 years ago, but it never happened. So... Man, I'd love it if Disney took some of that stuff out of the vault. Yeah, we, we might. I mean, who knows how the end of the, the, this show... I mean, eight weeks is, is... Eight episodes is two months of this, right? So, you know, they've got a lot to, to do there here. But I know, um, uh, the, you know, they say here, future episodes will dissect the cast, music, practical effects, and how The Mandalorian changed filmmaking technology. So I'm excited for this. I'm excited to, to catch up on this. So there's some weekly new content for us, Mike, that we can we can dive into. Um mm-hmm. They also said that there are about 4,000 visual effect shots in this show. Uh, just to give you a comparison, the Avengers only has around 2,000 visual effect shots. So post-production is a very huge part of this uh, this whole show. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day. Even though they have the big LED Unreal Engine TV screens, right? They still mm-hmm. need to work on the visual effect shots. Like, just so many of them. So I'm excited to see how this plays out for the yeah. documentary. Uh well, first he was a zero, and now he's a hero, Mike. Now he's <laughs> going to have a live-action movie. Man, you're looking for that transition, and you found it. I did. Well, I was trying to think, am I getting the words to the song right? It's Hercules. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know much about Hercules, other than I, I know um, uh, Danny DeVito voices Phil. <laughs> and um, I, I, I'm mainly bonded to the Hercules animated film from the Kingdom Hearts video games, because I believe... <sighs> It, I believe it's Kingdom Hearts 1, I think. I, yes, I get the it first is. one and the second one confused. Where uh, the Hercules world was the world that had like the tournament style thing where you could just go back to and grind and grind and grind and get XP. Yep. And I think also there might have been, I think there was story element connected to it yeah. a little bit. And that was the first place I think you fight Final Fantasy characters maybe as as well. Yeah, because um, um, Hades has them under their power or whatever. And then to get free, you have to beat the, the big boss yeah. monster. Yeah, the so there's a, there's a little there's a little nostalgia there uh, for sure. But great, this is finally a Disney uh, movie where you don't have to put quotations around live action. Mm-hmm. It seems like there will be humans in this. Well, what I'm thinking here, uh, they have Joe and Anthony Russo only as producers with their AGBO banner, which you know we've mm-hmm. seen recently on Extraction. Is this a Chris Hemsworth movie? Then we just don't know it yet. Is this another <laughs> Chris Hemsworth movie? Because he would be Hercules. I, I don't know. I feel like. Obviously, I feel like Chris Hemsworth and his muscles could equal uh, Hercules, but Hercules is a little bit of a, um, like a, a pretty boy. Like, I know Nathan Fillion is probably a little too old for the role. I'm not trying to, like, say he's an old man, but, I mean, Hercules ideally should probably be in his 20s, I would think, if you're casting him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, like, yeah, he needs to kind of have that kind of, like, sw- like that kind of, like, the the, the jock the jock kind of swagger that I would, I would think, like, a Nathan Fillion kind of has. So, um, I don't know. This could be a, an unknown that gets cast. I mean, they've done it before yeah. with Aladdin, where they kind of cast people who haven't really heard of before. Well, the first half of, or first half, first, maybe third of Hercules is him as a young child, anyway. And most of my Hercules knowledge actually comes from the end animated TV show. I don't know if you ever oh, yeah. watch that. I forgot they made that where he was a kid. I'm pretty sure that's on Disney Plus as well. But I mean, I, I think this is a, a fun opportunity um, to remake it and do it a little differently. Uh, I've seen a lot of people who want Danny DeVito to return as Phil in this, oh, in this show. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, do that. And then um, uh, the other casting thing I've seen that, that blew up was Ariana Grande as Meg. Uh, the, the, the female I guess quote unquote love interest. In oh this. yeah, I'm trying like I'm just trying to match visuals in my head. Yeah, sure, okay. Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> like yeah, whatever. Uh, they'll probably won't, but you know that's the thing. Who voiced Hades in this again? Um, oh man, the voice I can hear the voice as clear as day. And, and um, people are yelling at us. I'm pretty sure it's the ooh piece of candy guy from Family Guy. Oh um uh, 
Guess what? Oh, you're gonna God. hear my noisy. You got You gotta look keyboard. it up, Chris. <laughs> Get that keyboard going. Yeah. I, oh, James Woods. Is it James Woods? Uh, let me see here. Hey, Is it James Woods? <laughs> I'm, I'm pulling it up. Hold on. <laughs> Uh, get, get it looks like the, James get, Woods from the photo. Yeah, cause, get it yeah. on the record, man. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, man, those are – I never realized how uh, strong the, the voice cast was in my head when it came to that film. Yep, uh, 1997 full cast. And cr- it's not even giving me uh, – here it is down here, Hades. James Woods, that is correct. So, I mean, yeah, uh, I, I think, you know, people overlook – I think the characters of Pain and Panic are very, very important because Bobcat Goldthwait, uh voiced Pain – and he's got that very unique nasally voice. I think you can bring a lot of these people back in this because they really sold this 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 thing. But like dealing with a pantheon of gods, I want to see this. Guess what? I want Mike out of this. I want a sequel. What? I want Ooh. a sequel. Yeah, this is. I mean, this is actually they're striking into a world here that I feel like they has a lot to go on. I mean, just look at the God of War franchise. They've uh, they've milked Greek gods to the end of the earth. So I can't imagine why Disney couldn't do it as well. Yeah, exactly. And and did this? I don't know. I'm gonna have to look this up here real fast. You're gonna bear me. Did Hercules get a sequel? That was dr- I I got to imagine it was in that directed DVD era for sure. Um, I, I would I would assume it's like we both said uh, we're not uh, it, uh, it's been a while I think uh, until well, since we've seen this film but I believe that there there's some like strong like video essays out there on YouTube uh-huh. where I think people think the movie is problematic at its core so I'm sure that there's some things that they, could be updated yeah, they have to change it. apparently there was one uh, Hercules zero to hero but this is essentially it says they uh, he uh, marries Meg and revisits his teen years which is essentially the TV show. Yeah, does he use, like, magic to turn into a teen again? Like, I guess he just, like, tells a story about his adventures. Oh, okay. um, Which is essentially the TV show. However, they got all the characters back for the voices here, it looks like, um, except for Phil. They had to get uh, another guy for Phil, but everybody else came back. So that's interesting. I want a sequel. I want this movie, and I want a sequel. I'm going to just go ahead and call it now, Mike. Live action. So Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll look out for the, for the casting on Hercules whenever we hear that. Yeah. Cool, because I'm going to talk about a shit movie I am not precious on <laughs> at all. And a lot of people probably are and probably going to yell at me, but I don't care to rewatch the Space Jam movie, Mike. Space Jam. Uh, there's a great podcast called the How Did This Get Made podcast, and uh, usually they um, they talk about you know just weird off offshoot B movies, kind of mo- random monster movies, or sometimes they'll just do like really bad studio movies. Um, and uh, they did they did Space Jam recently to a live audience full of a bunch of uh, millennials that are in love with uh, the original Space Jam movie, and all of these like kind of like forty year olds were just like this movie not good why do you people think this movie is good so I'll, I'll have to say the nostalgia is definitely strong with the original Space Jam but I would say that it's it's earned nostalgia I mean you got uh, arguably the greatest basketball player of all time whether he can act or not is uh, teaming up with one of the most iconic cartoon characters of all time. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can you can say the movie was or wasn't good, but there's no way you can't say it, it's not iconic in some way. Well, so uh, everyone, that's that's the that's everyone what has I'll seen leave Space it. Jam. Okay, that's mm-hmm. the thing. Everyone's seen it. It's just not something that I'm like I need to re- go rewatch Space Jam. Uh, whatever I think about it, and they have finally got around. Was it 20 years later, if not more, more than 20 years later? Um, because I think it was in the 90s, wasn't it? To making a sequel, uh, Space Jam, A New Legacy, the most uncreative title for this. As well. <laughs> like, give me something Acme Acres. Give me something, you know... Uh, Looney Tunes. Give me something. It says LeBron. Or like, or do like a do like a play on the word like Space Slam or something like that. But I guess they really wanted to keep the SEO value of Space Jam in there. Yeah, I mean you can have Space Jam in there. It's fine. Just give another like something a Space Jam Legacy or something like that instead. But like, okay, we've got again uh, iconic Danny DeVito uh, voice, right? Wasn't he mm-hmm. like the main guy with the Scar? I think it's got some fun cameos, but overall. This this movie, I mean, I'm not excited about LeBron James and Bugs Bunny. If it's not Michael Jackson in here, or Michael (laughs) Jackson, Michael Jordan, why are we watching this? (laughs) I assume that you, this movie is just going to be filled up with tons of cameos, so it might just be kind of fun to go to the movie to see all the cameos uh, that pop up. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Basketball is really, really uh, in the zeitgeist right now because there's this uh, Michael Jordan like docu series that's airing every Sunday. So like every Sunday, I log on Twitter and I see it, I see it trending. I haven't watched any of it, but apparently it's really it's really um, 
it's really uh, driving nostalgia to the 90s and Michael Jordan in general. So this is a, a better, as good as time as any to reveal a new logo. So, yeah. uh, But I guess there's some discourse out there between the LeBron fans and the Michael Jordan fans between uh, who's the, the greatest of all time. And I guess uh, if you're watching the documentary, you, you're leaning hard into uh, Jordan, I guess. If I don't, well, I don't, I don't. Why am I talking basketball, Chris? I don't stop. understand you, it. <laughs> sports ball is not our strength here. We don't get it. I will tell you uh, for for this Space Jam kind of thing again that we're not, you know, we're not think, you know, precious on. Will they bring back the five little characters? And will they make another Pulp Fiction reference? Because that's the only part of this movie I enjoy is they actually do the Pulp Fiction reference. Yeah, I hope they do. Uh, they do uh, and, references from different. Decades, and actually. will this tie into HBO Max's Looney Tune series? Oh, that'd be kind of funny. Um, With the different uh, designs? Yeah. <laughs> I want to see, uh, even though I don't recognize any pro athlete when they're on screen, you can always tell that they are a pro, th- pro athlete because they can't act. So it's always funny to see cameos uh, from uh, professional athletes in movies because they just, they're just they reading yeah. off cue cards, which I always kind of find endearing and funny. So uh, I'll enjoy those parts of the film. They're out there trying. They're out there trying. <laughs> so Space they're Jam. Trying. They're trying. They're trying to diversify. They don't know how long they'll be able to keep playing basketball for. They got to see if there's an acting role. That's in there true. For they it. need these residuals from this. Uh, also, uh, one of the few movies you can do in post production because all they're doing right now is drawing animated characters over these, <laughs> these scenes. Uh, July sixteenth, twenty twenty one, for that release. Uh, new mutants. Uh, actually, there's like probably a dozen new new mutants photos out in the wild today, Mike. Um, and I'm going to mm-hmm. pull you up one here. Because this is a creepy villain in this movie. Ooh, man. If you <laughs> were having pro- problems like sleeping, I, I clicked into this and I was like, oh, okay, creepy, creepy villain in hospital. You know, I'll, I'll just check this out before the show. And I was like, oh, God, this is freaking terrifying. Yeah. So uh, anyone who thought New Mutants wasn't going to be scary or have any uh, horror portions will gladly be uh, surprised to see this image. Of what looks like something you would fight in like a Silent Hill video game. God, this is freaking me out. This is all, I'm also kind of getting like um, uh, kind of like the YouTube vibe from that. You Slender remember that Man? weird character? Yeah, it has a little bit of Slender Man in it for sure. It also has a little bit of that. Um, what was it? Bobo? Momo? What was that? What was yeah? Momo? That Momo character, just like kind of the odd proportions. Yeah. And then they they have like this weird kind of throat on it, where the throat's not where the looks throat like, usually is. Like it's like snake. where the tongue. Yeah, it's where, like, the tongue should be. This thing is, like, really freaking me out. So, and it's got, like, one, two, three, oh, it's got five fingers, but it, like, doesn't have a thumb. They, like, replace the thumb with a finger. Yeah, yeah. this thing's freaking me out. What the hell is this, Chris? <laughs> yeah, so this is what's called the the, toothle- uh, the toothy man or what, men. Apparently, these are the, the people that will be hunting the new mutants in their, like, little school. Uh, why did you do this to me? Why does this? Why is this in the world? Because we've always, we, we you know, there are times where we're excited for new mutants, and there are times, like, can this movie even be good? And I'm like, you know what? I'm in. I'm in the New Mutants. But I'm in. I'm in their. I'm in their team for this one because I'm like, this is. I didn't expect <laughs> this at all. I want to see this thing beaten to a pulp. That yeah. would be very satisfying. I, I went ahead and I, 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 I and I looked up those other those other images that came yeah. out as well. Uh, there's another shot of this creepy thing like screaming up towards the towards the heavens yeah. which is uh you can get a little bit better view of that creepy ass throat um but you get to see the the bear thing i forgot what the bear yeah, thing is called demon bear uh there's a yeah, couple demon bear images you get to see in the limbo of uh, with magic i think who will be probably be the star stand out of this movie uh with her soul sword and then i don't know if you saw the the doctor has her own she's a mutant she has powers um, oh i didn't know that and she she well in the comic book she creates force fields and she is seen creating bubbles around the, the new mutant characters to keep them separated so Oh, um, man, there's just, some cool uh, stuff in here. Like, it's weird. Like, they're putting promo stuff out. Are, the, are, are these official promo images that are being released or yes. are these leaks? These are not leaks. Okay, so w- I'm just kind of curious why. Like, did the did the did the PR department not ha- have anything to do this week? You know, New Mutants won't be coming out anytime soon, just like every other movie. So, you know, maybe who knows? Maybe this is like a hint that they might be dropping it video on demand, troll style. Mm-hmm. It could be. Again, we've talked about that. What contracts are holding this in place from mm-hmm. uh, preventing that from doing that? But I mean, uh, I, I think I think it's pretty cool. I'm gonna slack you, not slack you. I, that's my work thing <laughs> i'm gonna send you an image via text message right now if it'll let right. me, it's not letting me send it but um i'll just do the link i, I think this image is pretty pretty cool looking here uh seeing the demon bear and magic with her soul sword i i'm really oh yeah mm-hmm. i'm really excited to see this movie and i really just wish 
you know, we had more information on it because I, you know, there are other reports. Uh, Dark Phoenix was the biggest bomb of last year. <laughs> uh, made the least amount of money. I think they lost money on it. So, man, the ebb and flow of my emotions with this movie are uncharted. Uh, they would not fit on a normal line graph. Uh, you would need a uh, you need tabloid size paper to print this uh, bad boy out. So, yeah. not, uh, this movie just needs to come out already. <laughs> little asterisks not to scale if you put it on yes, a exactly. piece of paper. So, uh, yeah, we need more information on this. Uh, something I didn't know. There's a Wonder Woman. Sp- uh, we probably report on this. There's a Wonder Woman spinoff coming called Amazons, uh, and that was confirmed by Patty Jenkins this week in an interview. Uh, she's not directing it, and apparently it goes uh, Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman two, uh, Amazons, and then Wonder Woman three is the game plan. Apparently, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I can only assume that there's comic book lore out there delving into the Amazonians outside of Wonder Woman, just because you know comic books. They've yeah. been around for eternity. They've they've delved into every nook and cranny. So, you know, I, I obviously uh, Mike here over here on the podcast. I don't know anything about this, right. uh, but I, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, I don't know exactly who you spin off. Uh, is Wonder I, Woman eighty four going to introduce maybe a new well, character that we might see moving forward? I don't know if it's a, a direct spin off. Maybe a prequel. I think what happens here, Wonder Woman has currently she had to learn how to utilize her abilities in the first movie i think she has to lose her powers or find out something about her history for her to have a a good story in the third one um Mm -hmm. because right now she's just kind of the all-powerful person in the dcu right now so i if it's a prequel i'd love to maybe see a legitimate origin to all this magical stuff that she has you know she's just endowed with it in the first movie which uh, without much explanation which you know okay it gets the movie going and uh, you know we don't stop the the roller coaster ride but like why is the armor so special you know who forged it what's the origin of it why is it a lasso you know why does the armor look the way it does like you know conveniently kind of matches the color of the united states which is kind of funny uh so yeah it'd be kind of maybe they'll dive into that a little bit yeah there's, there's a lot of here to, to play with this character and kind of set her place going forward because the only time we've seen her in the current timeline is batman uh v superman and justice league right so wonder woman takes place in 84 so how do we get her to the current day and what does that look like what what can she lose to really become a hero yeah i have to say my the only the coolest the single coolest and almost the only redeemable part of justice league is the one of it it shares the same thing with one of my favorite parts of the first wonder woman movie which is the awesome horse dismounts like when the uh when the when the amazonians are trying to outrun was Steppenwolf, is that his name? Yeah. <laughs> with the cube, with the MacGuffin box. I don't even remember what it is. The mother box. Uh, That's a really cool scene of them kind of progressively trying to chuck the box further and further while they're on horses. Steppenwolf was like freaking killing the horses with his feet or whatever. And then there's a lot of that in the first Wonder Woman movie. So if a prequel just gives me more horse action, I'd be down with that. Yeah, I'd be down. I, I think I think you do a prequel and not touch on anything. Actually, Diana Prince and, and set up a lot of stuff for the future. Mm-hmm. So. Knock on wood. Uh, it's also the story started by uh, Patty Jenkins and Jeff Johns, who we know is working on the Green Lantern series uh, yeah. and the Green Lantern movie. So maybe he's tying these all together somehow. Um, Somebody's gotta. He's gotta. <laughs> someone's gotta build a big universe. And I, I believe, I believe in Jeff Johns. I love his Green Lantern run. I have it behind me in comic book form. Let's see what we can do with this. The Flash. We've talked about this before. Um, season seven is the last season on Grant Gustin's contract. And mm-hmm. they've not talked about season seven or, or eight and nine yet because of the pandemic. So do you think there's an opportunity here for them to just do one, eight and done? Or do you think they're going to try to get two more out of this? I got to imagine that during these contract talks, there's somebody is talking about the end in some aspect of the way. Like, I mean, I, I can't imagine the flash going on for 12, 13, 14 seasons. You know, there's gotta be a future in sight. So it makes me think that if a contract is renegotiated, we might see one or two more seasons and then they'll kind of wrap up that as well. But I would say, you know, once the kind of the flash is done, you're not really left with any huge, heavy hitting CW Arrowverse shows really anymore. I mean, I'm sure you got some quality content. You'll get some quality stuff out of Black Lightning and maybe even possibly Batwoman. But I mean, Supergirl. the big universe shaking stuff 
was happening in the Flash and happening in Arrow. And yeah, I, yeah, I guess the the Wonder Woman would be the logical next place uh, to put it. But I mean, you're kind of you're kind of using up kind of your like your two huge characters. You know, there's always a possibility. You know, they're making like the Superman show and everything. There's still there's still there's still gas left in the tank. But it seems like once you lose the Flash. Uh, which was, I would say, the biggest show out of their whole whole arsenal. It's got to just be downhill from there, right? Or at least downhill, and then you get off of the exit and you merge onto the HBO Max pipeline, you know, and then things just shift over there. Well, I mean, I think I think I don't want you to shift. I don't want this to, to merge with that quality that they put out of on um, DC Universe and HBO Max. I think just end it. Uh, but yeah, you're right. This is like running on. You've been running your car on premium fuel. And now they're out of premium fuel. You have to put it on unleaded, so it's not going to run nearly as clean or well. Um, with Supergirl, Superman, um, possibly the the was it the Green Arrow and the Canaries spinoff, um, Legends of Tomorrow. I'm surprised that's still got kicking, and the other two shows. So um, yeah, you got to figure out something. But I think I think I don't think it'll hit double digits, Mike. I think I think. If things slow down, Grant Gustin may find himself doing more bigger projects or working, looking for something else that's more consistent. So, mm-hmm. knock on wood. John Wick Chapter 4 has been pushed back uh, oh, one full year to May 27th, 2022. I gotta, I gotta know. I gotta know. I gotta know what's gonna happen. Yeah. What's, what's up with John Wick? Is he, is he, uh, the assassinations, is he dead? No, he didn't die. Uh, he, he's with... Uh, Morpheus is. Yeah, he's with uh, the homeless people now. Yeah, yeah, and, the, and their underground rat army. So we'll see how this goes. I'm excited. I like the last one. I, what I really want to do, Mike, is just watch them all together. Because they all take place over like a long weekend. So Ooh. I'm like, I'm going to see these all just Ooh. together. <laughs> you know what they can do? Uh, they can build in some like Goku style regeneration thing. Like John Wick was like effed up beyond yeah. all all reason after the end of the third movie. So it'd be kind of cool if they built this kind of weight into the actual story. Like John Wick has just been recovering. Yeah. Like you said, like what you do with your character is you want to take their powers away so they have to build themselves back up. I mean, imagine like a John Wick just kind of living in a cellar or a basement for like two years growing his bones back you yeah. know trying to repair his like well, torn muscles i'm sure he's got something messed up with his spine in some way well he, he also you know needs time he's always been on the defensive right he's never been mm-hmm. on the offensive so give him time to recoup make it catch up with the current time and then he's got a plan to do everything he actually gets to be the one on the attack in the next mm-hmm. movie would be really really cool i think but. Yeah, I think I think uh, I don't even really remember exactly where the finer story points left off with the with the broader world in general. I just remember him falling off that freaking well, that freaking building. Did, did his friend betray him, or did his friend save his life? the The higher council is after John Wick, and they may have got him. We don't know. Remember, because they had that one lady who looks like a dude. Um, the, no, but okay. I'll, Okay, I'll Spoilers need to for John Wick three: the um, Shane Black's <laughs> character shoots him, and he falls off the roof. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah but he right. shoots him to not necessarily kill him, to save him, betray him, so he can fall off the roof and live with the, the rat people. And <laughs> um, he is, you know, the the I guess the High Council of Assassins was like was going to take Shane Black's hotel away from him. Remember, but since he saved that lady, their uh, educator or whatever it was. He he's back in the good with the Assassins Club. You need to go watch John Wick Three, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I need to watch it. I mean, it's a roller coaster ride. Yeah, it is. It's fun. It's fun as hell. I've seen I've seen I've seen uh, it's in theaters twice because they accidentally played it instead of Toy Story Four when I went to the theaters last time. <laughs> hey, for that. Lastly, speaking of Vikings and God of War, I was sa- I was saving this uh, the Assassins Creed Valhalla trailer. The wait, newest... wait, 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 wait! Speaking of Vikings, what Vikings were we talking about? Uh, you were mentioning Vikings earlier in some sort of uh, mythology in Hercules. Uh, we were talking God uh, of War. You know what? Sure. <laughs> huh. Okay. Either way, they Assassins Creed's done Greek mythology. They they've done more. Now they're doing Vikings with Valhalla. The trailer premiered this week. Ooh, Man, I've not played an Assassin's Creed since 2, and I'm excited for this one. Uh, I've only ever played maybe 20, 30 minutes of the first Assassin's Creed. Uh, so I, I get it. You know, I, I understand, you know, what this is. Uh, but I, I know the franchise has gone like this huge, uh, this huge, uh, this huge different way. I'm curious of the story, because the last I checked in on the Assassin's Creed story, this one guy was connecting with his one ancestor in the past 
who was like an assassin, and now it's spanned all of these different. So does this same scientific organization just keep getting different ancestors and plugging them into this machine? Or is it just totally taken on a new life of its own? I don't even know. Well, I, there are the Templars and the Assassins, and I think they have more. You're not just the one guy um, anymore. There's there's several of them because you know there's pirate runs. There's you know the ones in Egypt, the ones in, in you know the different mythologies. Uh, so. I heard the pirate one was really fun. I like I, like I said, I haven't really played any of these games, but I heard they really hit something. They really hit something on the head when they were doing uh, the pirate gameplay. Yeah, so I guess people really liked that. So there it seems like there might be some sailing as well. Yes, there, in this Valhalla. There game. are sea and land combat in this. So taking the best of both worlds and doing this. Uh, was was cool seeing all these. Vi- I mean, in this trailer, you see the Vikings doing battle with the English people who are telling lies about the Vikings, right? They're like mm. they kill women and children, and then you see them like let the women and children go, uh, mm. and then it gets into like this Game of Thrones style battle with like this Viking versus like the big like the the, the England's version of the mountain kind of thing, mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, he's gonna kill him, and then he just comes out of nowhere with the the iconic Assassin's Creed blade mm-hmm. and just drops him, and I'm like. All right, you got me. You you you, you had uh, you had my attention uh, from the get go, but but now you've got my curiosity. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm just purely reacting to the cinematic trailer, which looked great. Um, but wasn't a lot of the gameplay of Assassin's Creed focused around like parkour, like moving around and traversing the, stuff? A lot. I'm kind of curious. A lot kind of, of the old ones much- were. Okay, yeah, I was like, how much traversing is going to be in the Viking yeah. times? Like, I suppose you can jump on top of a hut here and yeah. there, but I guess you're not really scaling. So, well, I guess if the Vikings do end up invading kind of maybe castles and stuff like that, maybe there could be stuff going on there. Yeah, I think I think, I think think there's some opportunity here, um, kind of like the climbing stuff and getting God of War. Uh, but I think since Assassin's Creed Origins and Odyssey, which are the last two, which was 2017, 2018, they went very large, very open-worldy uh, kind of things. So I think I think uh, the, this is an opportunity for them to you know you, if you're doing the same game like that over and over again it probably gets old um, from my understanding so uh, I'm excited to see these open worlds and how you can use you know the Vikings and your cities and, the, and England and all this other you know taking your boats places I'm very kind of excited for this I've not been excited for one in a while <laughs> the big the big question will we ever see Michael Fassbender return to the movie franchise Assassin's Creed oh my god I forgot I watched that w- with a trailer scored by a Kanye West song. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I mean, that's just that's just wild. Um, so I'm I'm looking here. Apparently, uh, spoiler alert, Mike. You care? No. Okay. I don't even know what you're spoiling, but if it's for Assassin's Creed, I don't care. Okay. So apparently, the the Desmond person, the the character from the first one, mm-hmm. is only alive for the first three, and then they okay. use his body for four to use his genetic stuff to to do more stuff with it. But there's like 12 games, so they just keep reusing the same organs or something. I'm just kind of pulling through here. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know how they tied them into this. I think they kind of gave I, up on a lot of that a while. St- statistically, ago. these games are very popular, so somebody listening right now has got to know what's happening. So if you can send us the cliff notes on Assassin's yeah, Creed. I'm, I'm trying to well. read it, and it's not working very well on Wikipedia, <laughs> if I can be honest. So, um, so what's cool also is this game, Mike, we've talked about this before. This is also touted as being on the current generation consoles and the next generation consoles this holiday. Oh. So um, will it be maximized for those current gen, the, the new the new consoles? Probably not. But if you're getting one, you're going to have a game you want to play right here. So Yeah, I think, um, I think Assassin's Creed Odyssey is... I, I, there's at least one Assassin's Creed game that's on Stadia, I believe. So you, this, who knows? This might even be on game streaming platforms, Stadia, and maybe Amazon's one that they're working on. Yeah, I see uh, uh, Odyssey was the last one, which was uh, Greece, and then the one before that, uh, Origins, was the Egyptian one. And I think Odyssey was, was still putting out content as of you know a couple... Like a month or two ago, so oh wow, um, my my in laws really love it. Um, they really love the Assassin's Creed games. Um, a lot of these spinoffs, like um, there's one for like um, different col- like different countries, uh, like Assassin's Creed, like China and stuff like that, and Chronicles, India, Russia, China. Those were free at some point on Xbox, and I have them, just never played them. So, <laughs> um, but but I'm back. I'm back in, Mike. They got me. They hooked me with the the, the Viking stuff and and everything. So hook, line, and sinker. There we go. All right, Mike, that's our show. We have gone on. This has been a long episode, uh, but it's been a good one. I feel a lot of good content here. I hope everybody's enjoyed listening. 
Uh, I've been instructed uh, to tell you not to mess up the ending of the show today. So uh, if you could uh, <laughs> tell everyone where we can find you and what you're up to this week at, where can we do that? All right. Well, they can find me at Mike Royer Design on Instagram and Twitter. And you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to see that wild video of your office with your keyboard and lights and everything going up, you got to post that somewhere so people can see yeah, it. Where can they find I'm it? I'm going to put it on uh, uh, Instagram uh, and, and, and Twitter, but Twitter's of all day. V-A-L-D-A-N. You can message me there. Or you can message me on Instagram. We have listeners who message us on both. Uh, and uh, Instagram is Valdan87. I'll put that video up here as soon as we get off this. Just for you, Mike. Just for <laughs> you. Um, you can also head over to Comic UI. If people want to listen to more of our episodes, what we're doing, I think we're going to have to do a review this month, Mike. It's now the month of May. Um, we can do the Star Wars Christmas special if you're really feeling it. No, I, mean, <laughs> I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Uh, where can people listen to more of our episodes at? All you got to do is visit SuperheroSlate.com. That's the best place to find all the avenues we host the show and to get our awesome show notes. So if you want to check out that uh, super creepy new (laughs) mutant villain, uh, we got that in the show notes. We got the Valhalla trailer, uh, the Space Jam logo, I suppose, if you really wanted to see that. Uh, Go check out all this lovely stuff in our show notes. And to get our awesome release calendar for all these movies that keep shifting around. If you're curious when Black Widow's coming out, I feel like I've already forgotten. But you can go to Superhero com and you can get that info you can like us on facebook follow us on twitter and instagram uh you can find us on oh man i already messed this up because i skipped the apple podcast part you can find us on apple Podcasts, youtube spotify wherever else you love to listen to podcasts it's the quarantine brain man i need to eat lunch yeah, uh, it's, but, it's lunch time for you it's time to, we've been on this for two hours so let's, let's wrap up give you some sugar you, in get, that blood. you can get merch at superhero slate.com slash store we love hearing from you please reach out i still i legitimately want to hear your driving stories do you have any new old driving stories i'm just nostalgic for something i've never gotten to do so uh, uh reach out and let us know and we love our super fans of the show and if you want to be a super fan of the show all you have to do is share the show with a friend share the show with a buddy social distance yourself so you don't get everybody sick and we will be here every week folks yep every week just for you guys stay safe out there and we'll see you next week all right that was better than last week bye (laughs) thanks for listening and don't forget to subscribe i thought it did internationally I, i mean did they not say had they am i am i doing am i like the Mandela affecting myself here.